welcome back. So, last time we were discussing the autonomous systems of first order equations and we defined uh, orbits through a given point positive orbits and we studied some simple properties of these orbits and we also stated a calculus lemma which will be useful in analysis of some simple examples which we are going to do now. Uh, <coughs> so, let me again continue with some more examples. So, in this example I would like to uh, indicate to you the significance of the equilibrium points. So, I take an example. So, this is example continue. So, this is third example. <coughs> so, so, again 1 d. So, x dot is equal to 1 plus x square. So, notice that this does not have does not have equilibrium points. As this right hand side is 1 plus x square it is always bigger than equal to 1. So, there is no particular <coughs> uh, reasoning for this 1 x square. So, you can put any function. So, for example, x 4, x 6 anything and even you can put sin square x etcetera. What I want is that this is a non negative quantity. So, that the right hand side does not vanish for any x. Okay. So, this so I claim that no solution of this equation is So, you see the absence of equilibrium points uh, says that for this particular equation no solution is bounded and in fact, this is more or less true in one dimension we can see it very easily even in more dimensions I will mention some examples that is also true. So, in one dimension it is very easy to see. So, once this the now, <coughs> right hand side term is does not vanish. So, for all x it has to either remain positive or negative. So, this solution will always be increasing or decreasing. So, that is the reason this solution cannot be bounded. Okay. So, let me try to give a different reason. <coughs> uh, in fact, I will mention some of uh, the some three methods to see why the solution no solution is bounded and you can see the power of calculus simple calculus. So, I am not writing any solution in explicit form. In fact, I do not know whether I can write if I take any arbitrary uh, non negative function or positive function I do not know that, but simple calculus will tell me that no solution of that equation is bounded. Okay. So, method 1. So, this is just calculus. So, we will also learn some analysis here. So, look at the <coughs> right hand side 1 plus x square. So, therefore, x dot is bigger than or equal to 1 for all p. So, I take any solution x of t and if that satisfies this given equation, then I must have this x dot remember x dot is d x by d t that is always bigger than equal to 1. Though we cannot differentiate an inequality fortunately we can integrate an inequality. So, integrate this inequality with respect to t. 
So, this is calculus integrate with respect to p. Okay. So, that implies x of p is bigger than or equal to p plus some constant. Now, look at this right hand side t plus c. So, as t goes to infinity that goes to infinity and the solution x t always stays above that. So, that implies so this limit x t as t goes to infinity is infinity. So, it is unbounded. Okay, so, let me just uh, <coughs> use this same idea for this second order equation now. Okay. So, x double dot is equal to 1 plus x square again no equilibrium points. So, this no equilibrium points and again the claim is no solution is bounded even for this equation it is a second order equation. So, let me again uh, now describe it in different ways. So, uh, method 1 Okay. Again simple calculus. So, let me stress that point it is simple calculus we are not you can try to solve it if you can. I do not know whether an explicit solution for this equation is possible or not, but I am not interested as of now okay, in the explicit solution, but I just uh, like to show that any solution to this equation is unbounded. Okay. So, write this as a system right as a system. So, I introduce another variable y. Okay. So, y is introduced by this x dot equal to y and y dot equal to y dot will be x double dot and from the equation I get that. Okay. So, this is my this new variable y x dot is equal to y and from the given equation y dot will be 1 plus x square. Okay. And now again if you look at the previous example now I use that example for this y. Okay. So, that so this implies y dot is bigger than or equal to 1 and again upon integration that implies y t is bigger than equal to t plus c. Okay. So, this clearly says that y t goes to infinity. So, in particular it says y t is bigger than equal to 1 for t not necessarily for all t, but some t star. Okay. So, that is t star for some t star. that you can calculate from this t plus c you this thing. So, you want bigger than or equal to 1. Okay. And now, you go back to the first equation here and you this y t is bigger than or equal to 1. So, that implies from first equation from first equation x dot is bigger than or equal to 1 for t bigger than or equal to t star. Okay. So, instead of now I integrate from t star to some t. So, I am only in this range and that implies again. So, x t is bigger than or equal to now t plus some constant for t bigger than equal to t star 
and that implies limit. is infinity and already this has given us limit y t as t goes to infinity is also infinity. So, remember y is nothing but the first derivative of x. So, in this case both x and x dot they go to infinity they are unbounded. So, it is not necessary that both x and x dot uh, are unbounded. In some situation it can happen that one of them will be bounded, but other certainly at least one component will go to will be unbounded. Okay. So, hence the orbits will be unbounded. So, in the absence of equilibrium points, so this is the point we <coughs> uh, note. So, in the absence of equilibrium points, the solutions will be unbounded. Okay. So, the orbits will be unbounded. We will go to the next example. So, method 3. So, view this equation x dot equal to 1 plus a double dot as a conservative system. So, we will have uh, a detailed discussion on this conservative systems. At that time, you can come back to this example and analyze using the whatever methods we derive in this conservative systems. In general, in general, a system x dot x double dot either an equation or a an equation or <coughs> so this is differentiation with respect to x so this is this is called a conservative system we will see in detail later just i am just introducing some terminology that's all and when so you re remember here only x is involved okay. so it's an autonomous system but only x is involved so, when this term also contains x dot for example, suppose I have a system like this x x dot. Okay. So, both so these are called dissipative systems. So, dissipative systems are more difficult to handle than the conservation systems. So, we will see a uh, little later. So, for example, you have seen in the <coughs> uh, discussion on problems. So, the Duffing equation and Van der Poel equations are examples of dissipative systems. So, we will see them in more detail later. Okay. So, let me now go to other example the one dimensional cousin of pendulum equation. Okay. So, for this equation, so let us write down the equilibrium points. So, what are the equilibrium points? Equilibrium points are those <coughs> at which the right hand side vanishes that is sin x. So, the zeros of sin x. So, these are plenty. So, this is just x bar equal to n pi all multiples of pi. So, n is an integer plus or minus 1. Okay. So, there are an infinite number of equilibrium, equilibrium points. So, that you remember. Okay. So, so, let me just draw this. 
this point. So, this is 0, this is pi 2 pi that is sufficient. Okay. So, each so orbit passing through these points is just singleton. So, these are the orbits. So, these are equilibrium points and orbit passing through them is. So, any orbit suppose it starts here, it has to stay here, it has to stay here, it has so it cannot cross. Okay. So, we will in this case we will have an infinite number of orbits. So, let us analyze in one particular interval. Okay. So, let us you take this let me call it i n n pi n plus 1 pi okay. two consecutive equilibrium points and I would like to see how the orb is starting in this open interval behaves you know that is our. So, th that is our uh, phase line analysis. So, I would like to see I would like to start the solution somewhere here and see how it behaves. Okay. So, you <coughs> let me write okay. let me write slightly bigger n pi n plus 1 pi the interval i n and I start an orbit through this x naught, x naught is in i n. Okay. So, again we go back to simple calculus. So, what we if you recall what we did in other examples, we would like to see whether the solution is increasing or decreasing and that will help us in determining the direction of the orbit. Okay. So, again go back to this equation x naught is equal to sin x. So, if I can determine the sign of sin x, then that I will determine the sign of x dot and that will help me in determining the direction of the orbit. Okay. And now, look at sin x. So, sin x has different behavior. So, this is is positive n is e 1. So, that you can easily check in this interval negative this is in e n ok this is in i n ok. So, if n is even sin x is positive and if n is odd sin x is negative. So, that means what if n is odd sin x is decreasing. So, let me just so the solution is decreasing. So, this is n odd. Whereas, if n is even, so it is positive, so it increases, so it just goes this n is even. You see the behavior of solution is very much dependent on whether this integer is positive or negative, okay, that is and now you use calculus lemma in either case. Let me just <coughs> so use calculus lemma. Okay, so this is an important result from. <coughs> so if n is odd, look at here. It's decreasing. So, this is the situation n naught. 
So, it is decreasing and bounded below by n pi. So, it cannot cross n pi because that is the two orbits cannot cross okay, that is uh, so simple one of the simple results of orbits properties of the orbits. So, we have so the limit exists limit x t as t tends to infinity it exits it exits and again one of the properties of the orbits when that solution has a limit it has to be an equilibrium point okay and in this situation the only possibility is that it goes to n because there are no other equilibrium points between n pi and x 0 the nearest equilibrium point to x 0 is this n pi and whereas, if n is even it is increasing and now it is bounded above by n plus 1 pi so it has to go to n plus 1 pi and important thing you should notice here is I do not have any explicit form of the solution okay, just based on the properties of orbits and simple properties of orbits and this calculus lemma I am able to derive. So, that means, a solution starts in this interval i n. So, it has these properties okay. I do not have any knowledge of the explicit form of the solution, but I have this qualitative behavior and that is the power of this qualitative theory. So, you should realize that. Okay. So, without uh, having an explicit knowledge of the solution, we are able to derive okay, it is for example, these limits okay, we are able to do that. Okay. So, in this case you also have explicit form of the solution. So, let me just state that as an exercise. Okay. So, it is a very simple equation x dot equal to sin x and you might try using the separation of variables to derive an explicit formula for the solution you can do it, but I just like to caution you. So, when you try to do this thing you get into this tan function an implicit relation as tan x equal to something okay. and then a task is to invert that tan and tan is a multivalued function. So, you should exercise caution uh, in a when you are trying to invert that tan. Okay. So, let me just uh, say that. So, let x 0 equal to. So, since it is in i n, so I can always write that as alpha. So, 0 less than alpha less than pi. So, that means, x 0 is in that interval open interval i n. Okay. Show that the solution it is a good exercise x t of x dot equal to sin x with. So, I give the initial depth. So, I take x 0 t equal to 0 x 0 is given by and we have already observed the different behavior of the solution depending on whether n is odd or even. So, the same thing we can expect in the form of solution also. So, just let me write that thing. So, x t is equal to n pi plus 2 tan inverse. So, c e to the minus t 
if n is odd, n by plus 2 tan inverse c e to the t if n is even. So, this is for all t. So, what is this c? Where uh, alpha is equal to tan inverse. So, you have used this tan inverse many times from the your college plus 2 level. So, let me recall so, okay, this tan inverse is a function from r to minus pi by 2 2 plus pi by 2 okay this is 1 1 r 2 okay just just a recall okay so it's a very good exercise and as and when we develop newer concepts we'll again come back to these examples again and again Okay. So, let me now mention one 2 D example. So, we have already considered it many times. So, here there are two functions. So, let me use the uh, x and y. So, y dot equal to minus x. So, it is a 2 D system, very simple system. So, here 0 0 is the only equilibrium. Okay. So, I want the right hand side to be 0 here. So, the first equation gives me y equal to 0 and second equation gives me x equal to 0. So, that is the only equilibrium point here. And of course, you can explicitly solve this thing, but without explicitly solving. So, let us try to analyze the orbits again. Okay. So, look at d by d t of x square plus y square. This is a standard example. So, we are again we will be seeing this again and again. Okay. So, if x and y are solutions of this given system, so let me calculate this d by dt of x square plus y square. So, this is just 2 x x dot plus 2 y y dot and let me just substitute for x dot and y dot from the given equation. So, this is just y plus 2 y y dot is minus x and you see that this is 0. So, 2 x y minus 2 x y that is 0. So, that tells you that this implies. So, this is true for all t. So, x square plus y square is just a constant. So, initially whatever you give x 0 equal to x 0 and y 0 equal to y 0. So, then I get this x 0 plus y 0 square where x 0 is x 0 and y 0 is y 0. Okay. So, the orbit satisfies this simple equation and this is equation of circle. equation of a circle uh, centered at the origin and radius square root of x 0 square plus y 0 square. So, let me call this as r 0. Okay. So, it is very easy to draw these orbits. So, this. 
So, if I take x 0 equal to y 0 equal to 0, I get the equilibrium point namely x 0 y. So, this is x axis, this is y axis and if one of them is non zero then r 0 is positive. So, you just get. So, these are all the orbits for this simple equation they are the orbits. So, again we have to indicate the uh, direction in which t is increasing and I will just mention that. So, this will be the direction. Okay. So, if you change again the signs here it will be. So, this will be in counter clockwise if you change the signs here it will be counter -clock, uh, clockwise. So, this is direction of. So, remember that. So, whenever we draw orbits we have to indicate in which direction uh, increasing t. The values of t are increasing. So, that we have to mention. Okay. So, we will come back to these examples again as and when we introduce new concepts. Okay. So, next we are going to introduce the concept of stability. So, let me <coughs> begin with a simple uh, game experiment whatever you call it and all of us at some stage of our childhood either we have done this thing or we have seen it. Okay. Again this simple thing. So, you take a ball you place it in this way and you also place it in inverted way and place a marble here and carefully place this marble here. Okay. In the first case if I move this marble little bit this way this way okay, it will have few oscillations and come back to the original position. So, this is the example of stability and same thing if I want to do for this marble and if I push either this side or that side it will just fall off. So, this is unstable. So, this is stable okay. and that is what. So, this is equilibrium position okay. and this is this is also an equilibrium position, but this is unstable and this is stable. So, we are going to introduce the concept of stability of an equilibrium point. Okay. There are more general at this point okay, let me make some remarks. There are more general concepts of stability of a solution, orbital stability and even structural stability they are more advanced topics. Okay. So, for this introductory course uh, we want to make even this introductory course little advanced uh, by introducing some additional topics than the usual topics that are covered in MSc syllabus and in fact, this qualitative theory is uh, one part of such an advanced thing. So, in this course we just introduce this concept of stability of an equilibrium point. Okay. These are special solutions as we already learnt. Okay. So, we concentrate only the stability or instability of equilibrium points in this course. Okay. And for more advanced things once you learn this concept you can always refer to uh, the more advanced texts which are listed in the uh, references 
and learn more about them. Okay. So, before going further, okay, let me just a remark again. We will be talking now more. <coughs> so, this equilibrium points. Okay. Let me just spend few minutes. So, just like the synonyms for orbits are trajectories and paths, there are many uh, synonyms for equilibrium points also and some of them are uh, fixed point, point I will write p t, okay. stationary point, critical point. Okay. So, different books might use different terminology etcetera. Okay. So, you will find many more uh, and uh, one uh, terminology that is used frequently in geometry is singularity. Okay. The, let me just spend few minutes, they call also this equilibrium points as singularities. Okay. So, this is especially in geometry, differential geometry. Okay. So, talking about geometry, the system 1, so which we started this x dot equal to f x. So, we will just call it because all our analysis is about that equation. So, in geometry, this is called a vector field. Okay. and in particular this right hand side especially right hand side. So, for example, in uh, 2D case, so we will have 2D case, so we have f 1 of x 1 x 2 and f 2 of x 2 x 2 x 1 x 2. So, these are given functions and so let me just, so at every point a direction is given. So, this is you take a point here, it is given here, given, okay. so this is the vector field. Okay. And then given this vector field, one would like to construct a curve having this given vector field as tangent. Okay. So, this geometrically interpreted as tangent and in uh, this terminology in geometry solution is called so our solution curve is called integral curve. Okay, so, that is geometry. So, uh, regarding this terminal singularity, okay. so when f 1 and f 2 are both not 0, so at least one of them is non 0. So, uh, this f 1 f 2 defines a unique direction as you can see here, okay. but if both are 0, then there is no direction, direction is suddenly lost. And that is perhaps the reason why in geometry they refer to these equilibrium points as singularities. But whereas, since we are having the uh, notion of dy dynamical system, so this equilibrium points or stationary points or even critical points are appropriate terminology when you view this equation 1 as a dynamical system. Okay. So, with this simple remark. So, let me now just introduce the definition of stability. And Russian mathematician Lyapunov 
was the one who contributed a lot to this uh, theory of stability. So, in fact, what we are going to study is this Lyapunov stability. Okay, so everything is attributed to Lyapunov, even if I don't write that. Okay, so whatever we are <coughs> covering in the, this lecture and perhaps next lecture. So let x bar be an equilibrium point. of this x dot equal to f x. Okay. So, that is our autonomous system. So, again I call it 1. So, that you always remember. So, x bar is said to be stable, Lyapunov stable. Okay. stable. So, this definition is more closer to the usual continuity definition of a function at a point. Okay. So, with usual epsilon and delta let me state it and then we see the geometry. If given epsilon positive there exists delta positive such that for any solution x of 1 with x t naught minus x bar. Okay, so, new notation you see I will just introduce that thing less than delta implies x of t minus x bar less than epsilon for all t bigger than t. Okay. So, this notation. Okay. So, this is just the Euclidean distance in R n. So, notation notation. So, if x is in R n with components x 1, x 2, x n. So, denote by this, this is actually a norm x 1 square. Okay. And that this is just square root of that, square root of that. So, what does the definition say? Definition say so here is x bar. Okay. So, at some initial time t0, if the solution, so this is just so x t0 is this distance is delta okay. and the requirement is that the solution x t. So, x, x t is here and then the orbit the solution will not go beyond this that is what the second condition is. Okay. So, once the solution at time t 0 is within a delta distance from x bar, then for all future times, so this is all future times t bigger than t 0, it will stay within an epsilon distance from x bar. So, important thing that x bar. So, we are uh, discussing the stability of this given x bar. Okay. Okay. 
So, otherwise otherwise so if that is not satisfied otherwise x bar is said to be unstable. Okay. So, this otherwise you just write the negation of the statement. So, carefully write it. So, so here if you go back again. So, if you have to write the negation of this thing. Okay. So, there exists some delta. So, let me just mention that okay, that is important. So, otherwise okay. So, that means, <coughs> uh, so there exists an epsilon positive such that for all delta positive uh, and a solution x of 1 with x t 0 minus x bar less than delta implies x tilde minus x bar will be bigger than epsilon for some tilde bigger than t ok. So, sometimes negations are <laughs> difficult to write, but carefully see the uh, logic and this what happens. No, no matter how close I start, so that so, uh, that solution there is a later a time and the solution leave that epsilon ball. So, that is that is what happens. So, this so there is an epsilon ball here. So, sorry this is not. So, x bar x bar is there and this so there is some epsilon. So, no matter how close I start. So, this is x 0 x t 0 and this is delta any delta that is important any delta. So, you you can come as close as possible except that you should not be at x bar there, then uh, that is an equilibrium solution. So, you will stay there for all time. So, okay, that that I have to mention. So, x t 0 and x t 0 not equal to x bar. So, that is important we are not then. and then if you start and eventually that fellow will come out at t star. So, this is x tilde he has come out of that epsilon ball that is what it says. Okay. So, uh, in the uh, remaining few minutes, so let me just tell what I am going to do in the next class. Okay. And so, next we are going to uh, introduce the concept of asymptotic stability. again of uh, an equilibrium point. So, it is it is slightly more than st stability. Okay. So, again let me just so let x bar be an equilibrium point. Let us 
let me just say it in few words and I will continue in the next class. So, x bar is said to be said to be asymptotically stable. if it is stable. So, that is the first requirement. So, it has to be stable slightly more than that then and there exist B positive such that any solution any solution x of 1 with x t 0 minus x bar less than b satisfies limit x t minus x bar as t tends to infinity. So, this is same as saying that is limit x t is x bar. Okay. So, in order to even uh, have some uh, good meaning for this definition. So, an additional thing uh, has to be noticed. So, that this x bar should be an isolated x bar should be this concept I will introduce that it should be an isolated equilibrium. Otherwise, what you have stated is technically not correct, because if there are uh, more equilibrium points near x 0, then we cannot even have these definitions. Okay. So, I will uh, say what this isolated equilibrium point is, then the definitions uh, make very good sense and then we will uh, have some more examples and we will proceed. Uh, okay. Thank you.